Chris Graham here for Trailblazer RV. We're here in the service department at Trailblazer and we're going to take you through a new vehicle orientation on the 2020 Chateau 22E Motorhome by Thor Motor Coach. Let's start right here at the front of the motorhome. The hood release is located uh, right in the center of the hood. Lift it up and prop the hood here. Um, a couple of notable maintenance points under here. Uh, here in yellow is your oil dipstick uh, and uh, uh, air filter uh, accessible from right here. Washer fluid uh, reservoir right here. Um, for any maintenance on the uh, engine or uh, warranty requirements for the GM components, uh, you can uh, do that at any GM dealer. Any warranty uh, or uh, maintenance or repair work on the RV components, uh, we're your location for that. On the GM chassis, uh, the mirrors are uh, manual folding mirrors. Fold forward and back and adjust here. Just inside the entry door of the motorhome, uh, you'll find an emergency start switch. Uh, this is used to boost the engine battery from the RV battery. So if you've had the motorhome sitting in storage for a long time and the engine battery has gone dead or low, you can use, press and hold this button to use the RV battery to boost the engine battery. Just turn the ignition and uh, it should fire up. Here's your fresh water fill. Uh, so open the cap and you can fill your fresh water tank with a garden hose. Or what we recommend is a one of those white drinking water specific hoses so you don't get the plastic paste in your water. Right here is access to your generator. It's an Onan 4000 gas powered generator. You can remove the panel here to access the generator for maintenance uh, or to start it from outside. Uh, to start the generator, press and hold the red button to prime it. Press and hold until the red button uh, lights up. The generator is prime. You may do that a couple of times. It runs off uh, gasoline from the RV's fuel reserve. If the RV's fuel tank is less than a quarter full, this won't start. generator starts up it'll run for about 30 seconds before the transfer switch actually engages the power uh, so that generator will have to run for about 30 seconds before it starts to supply any power to the RV right behind that is your hot water tank um, to drain the hot water tank, there's a little uh, plastic drain plug here that can be removed to drain the water from the tank. Before you pull that plug, make sure to release the pressure from the tank. The tank sits un under about 40 PSI, uh, so you'll want to use the pressure relief valve to release the pressure before you uh, pull the drain plug. Right above that is your furnace exhaust. Only thing to take note of with this is it gets very hot, so make sure if there's kids around the RV, they know not to touch this. And you have your outside shower here, pretty simple hot and cold uh, water taps. 
shower will extend to about that high. Don't forget to winterize this in the winter when you put the RV away. Uh, it's commonly forgotten in the winterizing process and we replace a lot of frozen ones in the spring. Here at the back is where your power cord will hook up. Uh, power cords stored inside the storage compartment on the other side. I'll show you that as soon as we get there. And this is where you'll feel filled with fuel. Uh, it probably goes without saying, uh, but be very uh, careful uh, not to mix up your fresh water fill and your fuel fill. Right underneath here is your sewer uh, dumping station. Uh, so you get uh, two valves, a larger black valve and a smaller gray valve. Whenever you're dumping your holding tanks, hook your sewer hose up to the drain here. Other end goes into the ground. Always dump the black first. Once the black has finished dumping, you can close that valve, open the gray valve, and that'll use your sink and shower water to flush out your sewer hose before you have to remove it. The sewer hose is stored here in the rear bumper. Just remove the caps and the uh, hose stores right inside there. And it's actually down at the other end right now. There's two more hose connections here on the end. Uh, one is your city water connection. So if you hook up a uh, hose to here, you can pressurize the RV's water system from the source. Uh, you won't need to use your water pump or worry about running out of water. If you're going to hook into pressurized water, we recommend using a water pressure regulator. It's just a little brass fitting about that long, goes on the end of your hose, and maintains proper operating pressure in the water system. Next to that is your sewer tank flush. Obviously goes without saying, don't mix these up either. Uh, when you're dumping your black holding tank, if you hook a garden hose up to here uh, and turn on the water, it'll spray out the inside lining of the tank. So it'll clean off the walls of the tank and the monitor probes that are in there to help keep your monitor panel reading accurately. There's a ladder on the back of the motorhome. We do recommend get up on the roof a couple of times a year and just visually inspect all of your roof seals. Uh, make sure that you haven't torn that rubber roof membrane or uh, need to attach some of the roof seals. Right here is your main storage compartment. Uh, it latches with the little plastic and the spring-loaded catch there. Storage compartments are lighted have the power connected to the RV. And this is your 30 amp power cord. So it attaches onto the other side of the motorhome where we showed you um, and plugs into the 30 amp post. We also supply a park adapter uh, to adapt that 30 amp plug to a 15 amp to plug into your household uh, 15 amp power outlet. Right here is your fridge vent. You can remove this cover uh, to get in there and uh, periodically clean out the dust and everything from in there. Uh, but it's primarily a vent. Uh, intake from here and exhaust on the roof. Uh, that fridge needs some venting to be able to work properly. And here is your propane system. Uh, this is an ASME tank, uh, so it's not removable and it needs to be filled by someone who's certified to fill propane bottles. Um, uh, pull up to the propane fill at the service station or truck stop. Uh, this is where they'll fill it from. There's a gauge here reading between three quarters and full. Uh, that will almost never read completely full because you uh, only fill these tanks to 80% capacity. Uh, this is your valve for your pro propane system. So you need to open this valve to use the propane system. Always turn that knob nice and slowly. Um, you don't want to, uh, want to open it too fast, uh, but open it all the way. So open the valve slowly and all the way. Just inside the motorhome, is your awning switch. And that's right here. So we'll extend the awning by pressing and holding on the extend part of the switch. And when that 
awning is fully extended, it can be height adjusted as well. So by simply pulling down on this arm, you can adjust the height of the awning. You can adjust both sides or just one side. We recommend leaving one side a little lower than the other so that you can control where your rain water runs off. Follow me inside the motorhome. I'll show you a few more things. Right inside the entry door uh, are a handful of switches and uh, dials. Um, the uh, switch right here, uh, this is your main uh, lighting switch. Uh, this is your step light, uh, so right at the feet to light up, your, uh, light up the ground as you step out of the RV. This is the awning switch uh, that I use to extend the awning. So extend and retract. Uh, there's also an awning light, LED lighting feature along the uh, entire length of the awning to light up your campsite and uh, step light just inside your step well here. Below those is your battery disconnect switch. This is the master disconnect for the 12 volt system of the RV. When you turn that off, all 12 volt power to the RV is disconnected. Uh, so when you put the RV into storage, you'll want to turn that off, uh, but otherwise leave it on because that battery will not discharge when it's turned off but it will also not charge uh, when that disconnect is turned off. So when you're plugged into power or when you're driving the RV, you'll need to have this in the on position uh, to ensure that the battery is charging. And below that is your solar power uh, pre-wire. Uh, so the RV is pre-wired for solar panels that can be easily mounted on the roof. Uh, this is the regulator and charge controller. Um, even without the solar panels though, uh, it functions as a voltmeter so that you can tell that your battery uh, or the, the exact voltage of your battery. It's a 12 volt battery on there now, reading 11.9 volts. Right underneath the step is where you'll access that battery. So it's a 12 volt uh, deep cycle RV marine battery. It's a flooded wet cell battery. So we recommend uh, once a year pop these two caps off and check the level of fluid in the six cells that you'll find there. If any of the cells are particularly low, especially if you can see metal plates sticking through the cells, just top it up with some distilled water and put a good charge on that battery. Uh, you've got two leads coming to the battery. Uh, and if you just open up the wire loom here, uh, you can see that one is black and the other is red. Red is positive, black is negative. Uh, always hook uh, red, to po red to the positive battery terminal and black to the negative battery terminal. There's also a spot in here for an optional second 12 volt battery. Uh, if you do a lot of off-grid camping, you can add an additional battery there. Come on inside the RV. Right up here at eye level, uh, when you enter the RV, is your, is your control panel. Uh, so you've got uh, switches here to activate your water pump. If you're operating off of your uh, fresh water reserve, uh, you'll have to turn on your water pump. And you have switches here for your water heater. You can run it on propane gas, uh, or you can run it on electricity. If you're plugged into power or running your generator, uh, you can run that tank on electricity, but you will find uh, you have faster hot water recovery time uh, running on propane gas. Also here is your monitor panel. So you can see that your propane tanks uh, are reading uh, full right now. Uh, battery is uh, fair. Uh, fresh water completely empty, black water completely empty, and gray water completely empty. This is also where you can remote start uh, your generator. Remote starting the generator works exactly the same uh, from inside as what we did from outside. Press, and press down on the stop button until the red light lights up. That shows that it's primed. Then you can press and hold the start button until the generator starts up. Just like before, it's going to have to run for about 30 seconds before the transfer switch kicks in and uh, powers up the RV. I'll shut that down for now. 
Here at the stove top, you've got three burner uh, propane stove top. So if you turn the burners uh, to open uh, or to, uh, to high, then you have a little piezo sparker here. And uh, I uh, am just uh, thinking now, I believe I left that propane valve closed uh, outside. Um, so you'll need to open the propane valve uh, in order for the burners to, uh, to work, obviously, any of the propane systems. Here at your fridge, it's a uh, Dometic uh, gas electric fridge, uh, and it's all automatic. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, turn, to turn the fridge on, uh, press the on button. The automatic lights up, showing that it is uh, working automatically. If it has 110 volt electricity available, it will always run on that. If there's no electricity available, it'll sense that, and it'll automatically start up on propane. You can override the automatic uh, by pressing the gas button. Uh, the situations where you might want to do that is if you're trying to conserve energy, if you're plugged into a weak breaker, um, or if you're trying to cool the fridge quickly, it'll cool faster on gas than it will on electricity. Um, having said that, uh, it still takes several hours for an RV fridge to cool down, so we recommend cooling the fridge the day before, then it's nice and cold when you load up your food. So here at the back of the motorhome towards the bed is your thermostat. So this controls your furnace uh, and really simple control the slider here at the top of the thermostat. Just uh, slide that over to the appropriate temperature. Uh, the heat from your furnace comes from this unit right here. And what will happen is the fan will come on immediately and it will take uh, 15 or 20 seconds before the furnace burner actually lights up. Uh, once it lights up uh, you'll have heat coming from the furnace. And as you can hear the uh, uh, burner ignition and uh, lighting up now. When you go to shut it off, exactly the same thing happens only in reverse. The burner uh, goes out immediately, but the fan's going to run for another 30 seconds to a minute and just to go through its cycle before it shuts down. Important with this style of thermostat, when you turn it off, slide the slider all the way to the off position and make sure you hear an audible click there. Uh, then you know that the furnace is turned right off. Uh, right beneath me is the power converter. This is the power center for the entire trailer, or the entire motorhome. Uh, so this is where all of your 110 volt breakers are for your 110 volt uh, circuits and fuses for your 12 volt circuits. Uh, it's not uncommon in an RV to blow a fuse, uh, so we recommend you have some extra fuses with you. Uh, you have five, seven and a half, 15, 30, and 40 amp fuses there. Um, so an a, uh, 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 assorted pack of uh, fuses wouldn't be a bad thing to have along with you. Once in a while this converter will make a little bit of a humming or a buzzing noise when it's operating under load if you're plugged into power or your generator's running and uh, uh, and your batteries are very low or you're running your air conditioning, it's perfectly normal. There's a cooling fan in it like a computer, it just makes a little bit of a, a humming sound. Um, in the bathroom, um, anytime you're using your RV's uh, sewer system, you'll want to make sure and use a good, strong toilet chemical. Um, there is powder, tablet, and liquid toilet chemical available we sell all three every time you dump your holding tanks come into the rv pour a package of toilet chemical into the bowl and press down halfway on the uh, foot pedal to flush or to fill the bowl with water once the bowl is full of water and toilet chemical push the rest of the way down to flush it down into the tank and your holding tank should be good until the next time you dump next time you dump Come inside, put another charge of chemical into the tank. The chemical needs some water to activate it, so make sure you uh, put some water down into the tank with the new charge of chemical. Right here is a GFI power outlet, uh, just like the ones in your house with a test and reset button. Uh, the only difference 
is in an RV, this is wired with all of the rest of your power outlets. So if you trip your GFI, you'll lose power at all of your power outlets. If you're ever plugged into power with the RV or running the generator, but can't get any power from your outlets, come in here, press the reset button, everything should go back to normal. Here at your dinette, you have uh, seat belts for both the forward facing and rear facing seat. Um, the seat belts right now are just uh, strapped uh, together underneath the cushions. Uh, you just need to re remove the cushions, uh, run the seat belts up through the through the uh, slotted spots in the cushion. Just for safety and comfort, we keep them underneath the uh, uh, underneath the cushions until you need them. Bed also makes down, or the uh, dinette also makes down into a bed. Uh, right here, uh, you have a little release, um, so you'll have to release that. Then the bed can just push down, or the uh, dinette can just push down. The cushions uh, spread out across it to make it into a bed. Beneath that is your propane leak detector. Um, so uh, that propane detector will serve three purposes. It alerts you obviously if there's a propane leak. Uh, it alerts you if there's a carbon monoxide situation. Uh, and it also alerts you of a low RV battery. It has a low voltage alarm in it just like the smoke detector in your house when its batteries are getting low. So if you hear that uh, start to beep a little bit, it's not necessarily alerting you to a carbon monoxide or propane situation. As often as anything, it's a low battery. Uh, just fire up your generator or your engine or plug into power uh, to uh, charge your batteries. Um, microwave and air conditioning. Microwave, air conditioning, and TV. Um, all three require 110 volt power. So you'll need to be plugged into power or running your generator for those. Uh, to run the air conditioner, You've got a few settings here, just from uh, controlled by the dial on the air conditioner, off, obviously. Uh, low fan setting and high fan setting, and it just runs the fan without the actual air conditioning. And low cooling and high cooling uh, is for uh, low fan speed and high fan speed with uh, the air conditioning operating. And this is just your thermostat control, uh, so you can toggle the, uh, the temperature that the unit kicks on and off that. Um, for uh, winterizing purposes, if you need to access it, your water pump is located underneath the rear dinette seat towards the back. Uh, you can uh, lift up the cushions, uh, remove a screw and lift up the decking of the seat to access that, or you can uh, pull this uh, drawer uh, and access it from there. Um, at the dash, not a whole bunch notable to tell you, but a couple of things. Your in-dash screen is wired to the RV's battery system, not the vehicle battery system. So you do need to have your, your 12 volt uh, battery disconnect switch just inside the RV door turned to the on position for this to work while you're traveling. Um, it's uh, AM, FM, uh, Bluetooth and has a rear camera as well. Um, so you can, uh, when you put the vehicle in reverse, the rear camera will start up automatically, uh, or you can leave the rear camera setting on the entire time you drive, that's fine too. Beneath that, there's an HDMI and USB charger port. Uh, the USB charger is charging uh, from the vehicle battery, not the RV battery. And the HDMI port is to mirror your smartphone on the screen. If you plug your smartphone into the HDMI, whatever the screen is on your phone will show on the screen. Uh, people use that commonly for GPS. There's not a built-in GPS on this system, uh, but your uh, smartphone almost certainly has a reliable GPS. Um, you also have a uh, inverter uh, here in, or an inverted plug here in the dash. This is operating off of the vehicle's battery uh, as well, not the RV battery. Um, I think that 
covers things for the most part. Hopefully you've learned something about the 2020 Chateau 22E by Thor Motor Coach. If you have any questions, you can always get a hold of us here at Trailblazer uh, or visit our website, uh, trailblazerrv.com.